Good morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was happy to be in the house of God this morning. Do you know what? I, I almost didn't want to start. I thought it's so great seeing everyone connecting. You know, communities being birthed, fantastic stuff. You know, I'm almost going to say then if you don't know someone, give someone a slap and say, good to see you this morning. Not a slap in the face, just a slap on the shoulder. We don't need to do that, do we? Because everybody's already connecting. So that's really, really good stuff. You know, I was just struck this morning, just before we start, uh, last week, you know, when Steve Ball came and brought that commissioning service and commissioning this church and, and not pushing us, but encouraging us into all that God has for us as a church. And you know that we know that we know the story, don't we? The power went off, didn't it? We had an electrical failure. We had emergency electrical people come in and work on the electrical system while the sermon was being preached, right? Yeah. Oh man, it was incredible. But the best part, which some of you have already referred to this week, was when, after Steve Ball had finished, the lights came on. And do you know what? I think that that is God's way of saying, the ribbon is cut, this church is now open for business. <laughs> Amen. So let's give God some praise this morning. Eh? Amen. Let's give God some praise. I can see everyone still gravitated towards the left. Don't worry, this is not a leftist church. It's just the heating is on the left hand side. Anyway, shall we stand to our feet? We're going to worship God. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we give you praise this morning for all that you have done in our lives. We don't only praise you for what you've done, Lord. We praise you for who you are. You are a holy God. You are gracious and merciful. And you have drawn near to each and every one of us who are gathered today together to worship you in the person of Jesus Christ and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we give you praise this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you are our Father. And we can say that today with confidence, that we are the Father who loves us. And God, we pray this morning, as we draw near to you for worship, would you reveal more of what it means, Lord, to walk with Jesus Christ, to know the Father, and to know this God, who is timeless changing, unchanging. Lord, we pray, God, wow us with a sense of your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. If a couple of people want to feel free just to pray as well, why don't a couple of us pray out this morning to the Lord? It's great. He wants to hear the congregation. One more person. Pray out. Yeah, Lord, we're gathered here this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. This is not my ministry, it's not Chloe's ministry, it's our ministry. But it's not even our ministry, Lord, it's your ministry. And we acknowledge that this morning, Lord. Could you come and minister to us this morning, Holy Spirit? We're desperate for your presence. We need you, Lord. We need you, God. We need the love of God poured afresh in our hearts this morning. Would you please come to us, Lord? We yearn for you, we long for you. We plead you. Hallelujah. I worship my heart. And I will praise you. My strength, 
catch your breath in the lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in the lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Your great God, great are you, Lord. So great. Great are you, Lord. Worthy. Great. Great are you, Lord, in every circumstance. Great are you, Lord, in the chaos of the world, God, yes. Great are you, Lord, when I'm feeling lonely, Lord. Great are you, Lord, when I'm depressed, oh God. Great are you, Lord, when my health is failing, God, yes. Great are you, Lord, when my children have gone away, oh God, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. We declare that great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Your breath. Because it's your breath. You know love. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So I pour out my praise to you only, it's your breath in my lungs, in my lungs. So I, so I pour out my praise, I pour out my praise, it's your breath in my lungs, in my lungs. So I pour up my praise to you only, because great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Great are you Lord. just want to lose myself just want to lose myself in worship just want to lose myself Just wanna lose myself in worship. Just wanna lose myself and you.
Jesus. Lord, we just want to lose our inhibitions this morning. We want to lose the inhibitions of the flesh, man. We want your spirit to take control and take dominion. I just want to lose myself and you. That's all we want. And where we don't want it, Lord, cause us to want it. I want to lose myself and you. I wanna lose myself in worship. I just wanna lose myself in you. It's your breath in my lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you, all oh, rich breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out God. Father, we give you glory this morning. We give you all the glory. Lord, would you just wow us with a sense of your majesty and your glory and your goodness this morning. Make the things of this world grow dim, Lord. Cause us just to want and hunger for Jesus and for the Father. We want to feel your presence, your peace, your love, your joy right in the pit of our gut. We want to know that peace that transcends all understanding. We want to feel warm and secure. We want to know the love of God. You know, sometimes, Lord, we can, we can idolize feelings, especially in this culture. But let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. We, we still want to know you. It's good to want to experience God. So, Lord, we just pray, Father, would you continue to lead us graciously by your Spirit? We have God living in us. Wow. Lord, I repent for every time that I've not followed the leading of your Spirit. I repent for every time, Lord, that I've thought I know better. I repent, Lord, being the theologian I am, I repent sometimes, Lord, when I've kind of trusted in things I've read, Lord, and not in you. I repent this morning, Lord, and I pray, Lord, and ask. I want more of your spirit, Lord. Your spirit gives us chance after chance after chance. We grieve him. We go our own wisdom and go our own way. 
and yet he's still there pursuing us and wanting a relationship with us. He's still there willing to show us great things. And that is who you are, Lord, merciful, gracious, forgiving and unchanging. We give you the praise this morning, Lord, and we ask, would you come and do what you want to do in our lives? In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. I absolutely love what Marion's just said there. All right, you're pregnant. Sit down. wasn't an anti-women's uh, rights statement or anything, because um, we believe we should honour those women who are pregnant, who do such a great work in our society in bearing children. It's not an easy thing to bear children, is it? It's a very difficult thing from the moment of carrying them in the womb, even to having them up to teenage years. I mean, I don't know, you'll be able to tell me which one's more difficult. I don't know, we've not experienced that yet. We thank God for women, we thank God for midwives as well. We do an incredible job in our society um, in bringing human beings into this world. Hallelujah. I love what Marion said there. You know what? That is a real example, isn't it, of the faith that God's looking for. You see, Marion, you've had a difficult couple of weeks. Um, I hope I'm not embarrassing you here, by the way. I'm just using you as an example because you've got a great testimony. And do you know what? The greatest part of the testimony is that prayer she's just said in the faith in God, she still trusts him, she still loves him. She's got reason to argue with God and maybe reject God for what? Why haven't you healed me, Lord? What, you know? But she's hanging on by faith and she believes in him and she's able to have a thankful heart today. You know? That is amazing, isn't it? A thankful heart in the midst of all that stuff that's going off there. You know, the damage is too. There's been many people in this church who've come up against it recently. Bless you, Ted. Bless you. <laughs> Get rid of those demons. <laughs> Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. No, no, I'm joking. But yeah, no, that is incredible. That is incredible. So yeah, no, we do. We bless you uh, for that this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. And um, I do just have a quick announcement to make as well. I was going to save this to the end, um, but if somebody, you know, it's probably better for show it now. The disabled toilet now works. So, for everyone to know, yeah, 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 a couple of people have been locked in the disabled toilet. Um, we're lucky that they've not tried to sue us for trauma. Um, you know, a church, you get locked in a toilet, you get traumatized, but um, yeah, no, so the disabled toilet is now working. So if anybody, I thought I'd better share that now, because if you need to use it mid-service, then uh, you can do that. But um, yeah, the lock was, uh, was, wasn't working, and our very own Andrew, you know, graciously fixed the door for us. So, we thank God now that the disabled toilet's in use. Amen. So uh, praise God. Okay, I want to speak to you this morning about the independent and unchanging God. You see, we had another song lined up for worship, but I thought, do you know what? Let's just park here for a minute. Because there's something really profound about that song that we've just sung. But I'm not going to talk about that right now because I'm going to be mid mid-sermon if I do that. So uh, we'll wait to get there. You'll see what I mean by that. But today we continue our journey of discovering who God is and how we can know his ways more. And we're doing this through taking a closer look at the attributes, as my wife keeps correcting me. It's not attributes, it's attributes. I don't really know. I don't really care. I've heard that sometimes I say things in an American way because I watch a lot of things in America. Well, English is English to me. Um, you know, you may beg to differ, but what is an attribute? We looked at that last week, didn't we? I gave the Google definition, because I think the Google definition is a good one. And it says that an attribute is a quality or feature regarded as a characteristic or inherent part of someone or something. And so what we're doing through this new series is we're looking at the characteristic and inherent qualities of Almighty God. You see, because it's important that we do this as Christians, as followers of Jesus. Questions like, 
who is God, how can I know his ways more, are answered in the study and contemplation of the attributes of the inherent qualities of the characteristics of who God is. I mean, it's important we do this because we're in relationship with God, yeah? I mean, I said last week, if I didn't behold Chloe every now and again, it wouldn't be much of a relationship, would it? I had to study Chloe, I had to get to know her so I could put the ring on the finger. And then I realized after that that I'd signed up to a life of study of Chloe. <laughs> um, so, you know, a lot of us don't realize that, you know, when we, before we get married, we think, yeah, we've just got to kind of pass the test and then we're in. And, um, yeah, no, it continues, doesn't it? It's a, it's a journey, is marriage and relationships are a journey. I behold Shiloh. You know, I'll sit there in the living room when I'm meant to be writing my sermon and I'll get distracted at this little boy climbing on top of, like, bike, this thing he's got, this tricycle thing, and I'm like, man, you're going to end up breaking your neck doing that. But he's, it's incredible just to behold him and study him and watch him and think, wow, this is what we do when we love someone, isn't it? Amen? And so it's important to look at the perfections of God. You know, it's also important to look at the attributes and characteristics of God because our success in the purpose of God depends on our knowledge of who God is. Not who we think God is in our own image, but of who God is biblically. You see, A.W. Pink said, an unknown God can neither be trusted, served, nor worshipped. And that is true. Daniel 11.32 says, the people who know their God shall be strong and shall do mighty or great exploits. Do you want to do great stuff for God? Do you want to be strong in God? Do you want your insecurity to be shriveled up? Do you want to, all that negative feelings that you have about yourself? And about the world, do you want that to be gone? And do you want the peace and the joy and the love that surpasses knowledge? Well, I want to encourage you, friend. Get to know the characteristics of God. You know, the more I know God, the more I understand his ways more. And less likely, then, I am to throw in the towel and give up when the going gets tough. You see, our joy, our success, and our security are founded upon the knowledge of God. So let's begin this year with our gaze fixed firmly ahead of us, not to the left, not to the right, not watching what other people are doing on Facebook, but let's be looking directly ahead of us, beholding the glory of God, worshipping him, so that God may be the all in all in our lives. This is what true and proper worship looks like. So if you want to turn with me to Psalm 102, if you have your Bibles, we're going to read verses 18 to 28. Psalm 102, verse 18 to 28. You might have a tablet, you might have an iPhone. Whatever it is, flick your app on. Google it. Google can pretty much do anything these days, can't it? Father God, I want to give you praise and glory for your word, Father. You have revealed yourself clearly to each and every one of us today, Lord, through your word. And we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, would you let your word do the talking? I don't know how your word works in our lives, but it does. It's supernatural, Lord. Jesus said that the man who built his house on the rock, on your word, his house remained through storms, through trials. It didn't sink. Father, we pray this morning that our lives would be built on the firm foundation, the solid rock. And we pray, God, that you, Lord, would come and move amongst us in our hearts. Witness, bear witness to your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 102, verse 18 to 28. Let this be recorded for a generation to come, so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. Then he looked down from his holy height. From heaven the Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners to set free those who were doomed to die that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise when people gather together in kingdoms to worship the Lord. He has brokered my strength in mid-course. 
He has shortened my days. Oh my God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days, you whose years endure throughout all generations. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years have no end. The children of your servants shall dwell secure. Here we have a prayer written by an unknown author in an unknown historical context. And this, this, this is a prayer written by the psalmist, and it's a prayer that expresses God's ex- expresses to God his experience of being weary with affliction. I'm sure many of us have experienced that lately in our church, although I don't really see people feeling weary, funny enough. I see people celebrating God, probably when they shouldn't be celebrating if we're judging it by the world standards. But that's the miraculous God we serve, amen. When we're losing in the eyes of the world, we're actually winning because our faith has overcome the world, amen. But this psalm here is a a psalm of lament. It's a psalm of crying and complaining to God because he's weary in affliction. The prayer takes three forms. There's a complaint before God. There's a refocusing on God mid-psalm. And there's a prayer in confidence to God, which is the climax of pretty much most psalms, actually. This is how Hebraic poetry is actually written. And it is the latter two stages that I want to focus upon this morning and that our text expresses. You see, it's here that we find some of the most profound statements of the independent and unchanging nature of God. Phrases such as, you whose years endure throughout all generations. This is who God is, amen. Of old you laid the foundations of the earth. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe and they will pass away. But you are the same and your years have no end. What profound statements of this great being who we worship. You know what? No one's ever seen God. Jesus Christ has made him known, but none of us have seen the Father. I don't know about you, but I get so excited. I wonder, what does he look like? Who is this God who we worship? They talk about the glory in the Bible. I just think, man, I can't wait to see that day when I will see that glory of God. Who is this mysterious person who's working in our lives? The only thing we've seen of God, we've experienced his presence, but we've seen his hand at work in our lives. I want to see the face. Amen? Who wants to see the face of God? Are you hungry to see the face of God? Or are you happy just holding his hand as he gives you blessings? Let's not fall in love with a blessing. Let's fall in love with with the blesser. Amen? But these statements are really, really profound because they declare to us two attributes of God that are closely connected and intertwined. And they are what theologians called incommunicable attributes. Big word there, but basically all it means is they are attributes that are not invested and transmitted to the creature. So for God to be independent, we can never be fully independent. For God to be uh, unchanging, well, we can never be unchanging. Yes, we can become more merciful, we can become more just, we can become more righteous, we can become more loving. They're communicable attributes of God, as God conforms us into the image of Jesus Christ, amen? But the incommunicable attributes would be something like eternal. We are not eternal. You know, we're temporal, we die. One day we will be eternal, amen? But even then in heaven, we will still be dependent upon the source of all eternity, which is God Almighty. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen? We need to think about these things, yeah? We need to be wowed with a sense of our own nothingness and God's greatness. Hallelujah. I'm preaching this sermon before I should be doing, but anyway, that's all good, Holy Spirit. So we're looking at the independent and unchanging nature of God. You whose years endure throughout 
all generations, throughout all of history, of old, of ancient of days, you laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens. Even the heavens are the work of your hands. This is where our journey begins as we explore the independence of God. You see, what we mean by independence is that God is self-existent. He's self-sufficient. Amen? In Genesis 1.1, the very first verse of the Bible, it says, In the beginning, God. That's it. In the beginning, God. There was a time, if you could even call it time, yeah? When God dwelt alone. When God was alone, there was no heaven, there was no earth, there was no universe even. There was nothing, no creatures at all, but only God, the triune God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit dwelling in perfection, in relationship, and in unity, perfect for all eternity past. Try and get your head around that. I'll tell you something, I can't. Yeah, I'd love to try, because when I do, it reminds me of how, how nothingness, it reminds me of my own nothingness. It humbles me under the mighty hand of God. Just get on that a minute, for eternity past, what I'm talking about there, it's not for a day, not for a year, but God dwelt for all eternity, from everlasting to everlasting, the Bible says, in perfection, independent from anything created, self-existent, hallelujah. This is who God is, self-sufficient. During eternity past, God was all alone. He was self-contained. He was self-satisfied. Hallelujah, satisfied in his own glory and perfection and goodness in need of nothing or no one. Why do I say that? Well, it's a humbling thing to think, friends, that God didn't need to create you. He didn't have to create you. He didn't have to put breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. He didn't need to do that. You know, sometimes we have such a sense of entitlement, don't we, when it comes to God? Oh, well, God, you gave me this life, and why can't you bless me, and why can't you make everything good? And You know, if there's a God, then why is there so much suffering in the world? Almost like God had to create you, and so therefore, he kind of owes you something. No, God didn't need to create you. Creation itself is an act of grace. Have you ever, when was the last time you was on your knees in prayer, and you looked at your own hands and you thought, wow, God you decided to, I wouldn't exist. This is holy ground that I'm stood on. If it pleased God, he could have created nothing at all. And for all of eternity, he still would have remained perfect and complete in himself. His choice to create was a pure act of his sovereign will for his own good pleasure. I want to say to you today, he didn't need to create you. And that's why we thank God so much that we have life today. And that we get to walk in this world that God created. I tell you something, it's good to have life. But it's even better to have eternal life. Hallelujah. And that is found in Jesus Christ and him alone. Now when God created, his creation added nothing to him essentially. Almighty God cannot be limited. He cannot be obligated. And he cannot be constrained by anything within the created order. He can't be limited by you, friend. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever, ever heard people say, oh, well, you know, you be careful, you take yourself out of the will of God. I want to tell you, you're not that powerful. <laughs> you're not that powerful to take yourself out of the will of God, amen? Like, God is so much better, so much supreme, so much more perfect and greater than we, we, we could ever be. His counsel and his wisdom. Like, do you know what? Like, it's impossible for God's will to fail. It says that in Romans 9. Who can resist his will? Hallelujah. This is a magnificent being who we have the privilege of being in relationship. Nor does God gain anything from us. You see, in Job 35, he says this, if you are righteous, talking to, to us, what do you give to him? Talking about God. Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness concerns men like yourself, and your righteousness, a son of man, men like yourself. And then Job says also, can a man be profitable to God? Surely he who is wise is profitable only to himself. You see, when we're good, when we're righteous, when we are living our lives right with God, 
It's not really benefiting him, it's benefiting us. That's why it says wisdom. To have wisdom is the, is, is the fear of the Lord, amen? Because it's wise that we live rightly in God's world as God's creatures. Jesus even said in Luke 17, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. In other words, Jesus is even saying, God gains nothing from our good works. All that we are, everything that we do, none of it profits God in any way. Yeah, it forwards his mission, but do you know what? If you didn't do what God wanted you to do, he could just raise someone else up to do it. God is no respecter of persons, hallelujah. He is dependent on nothing, but everything depends upon him. The Apostle Paul at Athens in Acts 17 says this in a really profound way, preaching to a, a, a pluralistic, secular, Greco-Roman pagan culture. And this is what he says. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. There it is again. It's your breath, O oh God, in our lungs. Thank you for the oxygen. Thank you. Have you ever wondered that this heart is a muscle that beats blood around our body and it keeps beating? I mean, it's incredible. What if it stopped? It done because of God. He's the one who sustains us. You see, God is independent. He doesn't need anything. He is sufficient and has life in himself. John 5, 26, they're the words of Jesus Christ. He sustains all things. He puts breath in your lungs. He causes your heart to keep beating. He causes you to recover and come out of comas. You see, God is incredible, yeah? God keeps us alive. When I was a drug addict and I overdosed off heroin and died, a paramedic came into a crack house and brought me back to life in a crack house where they were known for leaving people dead in back alleys with overdose. For some day, some reason that day, they found an ambulance, which could have brought them, it could have brought attention from the police on the house and I'm alive today. That was three weeks before I went into prehab that. I died and I came back to life. This is God. God is sustaining all life and all things. For in him we live, move and have our being. Hallelujah. For from him and through him and to him are all things. Forever blessed he is. Amen. Hallelujah. I thought that was Shiloh clapping then. Come on Shiloh. I want you to catch that fire of the word of God. You see, God is the one who, he alone, Paul says, has immortality. He dwells in inapproachable light, and he, no eye has ever seen him, nor heard him. He is immortal. He is eternal. He is invisible. The only God. He is infinite. God is eternal. I mean, have you ever thought about that? What that means, eternal, eternity. I wonder what comes to mind when you think of the word eternity. You see, we're not talking about one massive, big, like, period of time here. There's no such thing as time in eternity. There's no past, there's no present, and there's no future in eternity. Eternity, right, to, to try and think about eternity accurately, it would be like there's one present moment taking place forever around the throne or, or whatever they're doing in eternity. I, I don't know what. I don't know what they're doing there. I mean, like, no eyes seen, no ears heard what the Lord has in store for those who love him. But I do know this, that if there's no time, there's no uh, history, present or future, there's just one moment that is taking place forever. And do you know what? That means that actually what's going off in eternity is actually more real than what's going off this morning here. This is a temporal realm. That is eternity. I mean, I don't even know how to express this in words, right? Yeah? There's one present moment forever, and yet every moment in our reality is changing. Amen? Lost where I am. It's for this reason that eternity is actually more real than the temporal realm. There's no time or there's no change in eternity. 
And because God is infinite, the source of all eternity and the source of all life, well, God is the only one with true being. We are becoming. God is the only one with true being. He is the one who truly remains from everlasting to everlasting. He is the source of all eternity. But we don't have true being. Human beings don't have true being. We are becoming. Human beings should really be called human becomings because none of us have true unchanging being. None of us are self-sufficient. None of us are independent. But we're becoming. We're growing. We're developing. Shiloh looks different now than he did a year ago when he was just out of the womb. Yeah, he's growing, he's learning, he's developing. This is the same for us as a culture, as a society. It's the story of world history, the development of the human race, of civilization. We're progressing towards something. Yeah, don't, uh, don't, please don't misunderstand. I'm not, I'm not advocating progressive politics there or progressive theology, but, but we are. I'm on about progression in, in the terms of we're growing, we're developing, we're aiming for something. Amen. That's a distinction that we need to remember between creator and creature. God is unchanging. He has true being. Every one of us are becoming. We're changing. We differ from day to day. Sometimes we wake up, we feel like in a bad mood and we can take it out on people or take it out on God maybe. But God's never like that. His love to you is the same every day. Hallelujah. His mercies are new every day. I don't even think I'd even notes this morning. Um, but, you know, we do change, don't we? We begin our lives opposed to God, the Bible says. In sin, my mother brought me forward. That's what David said. We are troubled. We are inconstant. We are unstable as human beings. You know, no human being can be depended upon ultimately. We tend to sing Hosanna, Hosanna one minute, and then the next week we're singing, crucify him, crucify him. That's human nature. Someone might be your friend one day, and the next minute they might be sticking a knife in your back. But I want to tell you today, that is not so with Almighty God. He is the same. He is unchanging in all of his ways. None of us can sustain ourselves. We're entirely dependent upon God for every breath that we take. And do you know what? This ought to really humble us in the sense of our own nothingness as we behold him in whom we live, move, and have our being. You know, God is transcendent over space and time. He's far exalted above every creature. He rests within himself. And he is, for that reason, the ultimate goal and resting place of all creatures, great and small. I mean, there's even a bit of a theology in there of rest. What does rest like? Are you taking days off? Are you spending time to look after yourself? And I don't mean resting from God, I mean resting in God. Sometimes if it manages my day off, I'm just going to sit and watch football on YouTube all day. Well, that is not resting in God, that is not Sabbath. We need to be resting in God, because that's where true rest, true replenishment, true soul refreshment comes from. Amen? But he is the resting place, the ultimate goal and source of all creation. This is why he's compared to as the rock. Our God is a rock, amen. His work is perfect. He remains immovable because he's like a rock, solid. With our life built upon that unchanging foundation. And his work is complete. You know, the prophet says, speaking of the Lord, For I, the Lord, change not. And in the new covenant, we have the same expression stated by the writer to the Hebrews. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. This is your God, I want to say to you today. And what a great source of encouragement. I've got a quote here from, another quote from A.W. Pink. It's really, really profound. Listen to this. There was never a time when he, God, was not. Nor shall there be a time when he will cease to be. God has neither evolved, grown, nor improved. I wonder if that's consistent with how we view God sometimes when we're going through stuff. All that he is today, he has ever been and he ever will be. He cannot change for the better because he is already perfect. He is altogether unaffected by anything outside of himself. Improvement or deterioration is impossible. He is perpetually the same. He can only say, 
I am that I am. Hallelujah. You know, because God is independent and unchanging, so is his will. And this is where I'm coming in now to just land this and really just give you something today of what this means for you in your day as we walk with Jesus. His will is unchanging. His will for your life never varies. It never changes. He's not calling you to this one day and then calling you to somewhere else. He's not going to pull the rug out from under your feet and take you by surprise. Sometimes he does, but when he does, it's great. Yeah. He's, that, that's, that's, that's not God. His love for you doesn't change. He's not going to say, I love you this morning. You know, I sent my son to die for you, but you know, tomorrow you've lost your salvation. That's not who God is. His will never changes, it never varies. Now, some may object to that and say, oh, well, what are you on about? Of course God changes his mind. You know, in Genesis 6, 6 at the flood, uh, the Lord regretted that he made man. Some translations say he repented that he made man. That means that God changes his mind. Well, no, it doesn't actually. You see, all that is, is it's an anthropomorphism. Big word again, but basically anthropos is the Greek for man. What it's saying is that actually that the word of God sometimes speaks about God in human ways so that we can try and understand him because if he didn't we wouldn't be able to fully understand what's being said there and if you really want some scriptures just to know really what I'm saying is true that God doesn't change his mind well there's two more verses here 1 Samuel 15 29 he who is the glory of Israel does not lie and does not change his mind amen it's there in the text for he is not a human being that he should change his mind yeah very quickly numbers God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind again and he and will he not do it or has he spoken and what will not fulfill it again Job 20 22, 13 but he God is unchangeable who can turn him back what he desires that he does so we can know without a shadow of the doubt the word of God does not contradict amen the word of God is perfect, infallible, inerrant. And if it says those things about God, we can know for sure that's who he is in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. The apostle Paul says, if he's called you, he's going to see you through to the end. Amen. Yeah, he's going to finish the work he's begun in your life. If, he, if you're born again, if he's filled you with the spirit, he's not going to a year later think, man, I'm just going to leave you because, you know, you're not, you're not, I just, I've gone off you. No, you know, God says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He will finish the work that he's begun is until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are we happy about this? We should be happy about this. Yeah, this is good news. Now, this is good news. It's either good news, but it could be bad news as well. You see, the fact that God is unchanging, right? Well, because God's will is certain as well, it's unchanging. That means that the day of judgment is certain and unchanging. God's not going to change his mind about judgment, yeah? There's a day of judgment coming upon the earth. It's appointed for men once to live and to die after, and after that comes the judgment. There's a day of judgment coming. I want to say to you today, friend, what will you do on that day? What will you say when you're before the throne of God on that day of judgment? Did you... Receive Jesus Christ, because I'm telling you now, your works, our deeds, our goodness, our own self-effort is not going to be good enough to please God on that final day. Only what Jesus Christ has done on our behalf. We need to be covered with righteous robes. We need to be covered with the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, and the mark of the Holy Spirit on our lives, and the good works and the fruit that that relationship with God has borne in our lives. Amen. Because God's will doesn't change, that means... He's not going to change his mind about a final day of judgment. It is coming upon the earth. What will you do with Jesus? So it's potentially bad news if you're not in a good place with God, right? But if you are in a good place with God, if you're born again, if you've come to taste the goodness of the Holy Spirit and of eternal life, then I want to tell you the promise of God over your life is as sure as judgment on the world. Hallelujah. You know what? And I've already preached this already. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will finish the work he's begun in your life, Kay. I flipping love it. It's incredible, isn't it? God is more for us than we are for him. He's pursuing us, amen. This is a radical God who never changes his mind. Do you know what? You can trust God with anything, Constance. You can trust the Lord with anything. 
I think sometimes we find that hard. We've been let down so many times. We've got governments who have been found doing things that they shouldn't be doing, right? Yeah, John? Yeah? Uh, we, you got to fight for your right to party. I'm going to say no more. I think you all know what I'm on about. But do you know what? what? This It's a world where we can't trust people or trust things. But I want to tell you today, you can trust God. And do you know why? Because his son hung there on a cross as a guarantee, as proof. Jesus Christ, God swore by himself on a cross, poured his blood out and said, this is a sure as your, uh, this is sure promise to you. That if you believe in my son, then I'll forgive all your sin. I'll remember it no longer. And you will come and dwell with me in my royal house in eternity. And do you know what? We can know that eternal life right now, but I need to finish. You know, just a couple more scriptures on that one. If, we conf if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not might be will be if you believe in him and confess it with your mouth and you mean it you will definitely be saved that is the gospel and then Hebrews 7 25 get on this this should just make you feel so secure I hope it does he Jesus Christ is able to save to the uttermost all those who draw near to God through him because he always lives to make intercession for us Jesus my friend is always praying for you if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, and you are born again. He will finish the work he's begun in your life. He will not change his mind. Now that is amazing stuff, isn't it? And if the worship team could come up, I'm going to ask Tom to play a song for us. I'm going to put him on the spot. There's a bank of songs in here. I meant to tell you beforehand, brother, but I forgot. But you're quite good at being put on the spot, I've noticed. I think it's a bit of a gift you've got. You should maybe put it on your CV or something. Um, because it is a very, very good quality. Just choose anything, bro. But I mean, what incredible stuff this is, you know. We're living in a world where laws and truths and realities are changing constantly. One minute you can go out, next minute you're on lockdown. Next minute this stat's gone up. You know, next minute you've got to wear masks, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. All this changing stuff. We're living in uncertain times. If it's not that, it's the you know, global warming thing, you know, the eco thing. People are all worried, thinking, man, what are we going to do in 10 years' time? The world's going to end. I mean, I don't necessarily believe that, but that's another story. But I want to tell you, we're living in a world where there's panic and fear all around us. Things are changing. Technology, the rise of technology. This meta thing from Facebook, the metaverse that they want to build. I mean, it's quite concerning, isn't it, really, you know, when you think about man being sinful. But I do think what, could, what, what potential that could have if it was used for the glory of God, amen. But the reason why I'm saying this is, in a world of unchanging, in a world of changing realities, in a world of uncertainty, in a brave new world that we're heading into, I want to just encourage you this morning that God never changes. The word there never changes. We know reality, and our reality doesn't change, amen. We're not here thinking, man, we've evolved from monkeys and we're going to become half human, half robot, and this is the next part of our evolution, yeah? No, we know. We have a biblical worldview. We have a sure and steadfast hope and a rock. Hallelujah. Is anyone happy about that this morning? Come on. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to worship God this morning. Hallelujah. Just sing along. If the words are not up, don't worry about it. Just take this time to give God some praise. Even sing out, sing a new song to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you this morning that you are independent. And so that, that means we can depend upon you. We thank you this morning, Lord, that you are unchanging. Lord, and that means that we can trust you. We can trust you like no other person. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you that you're eternal, that you're timeless. And that means, Lord, that the source of all our life and being is found in you, Lord. Would you teach us, Lord, how to receive all that we can from you, Lord, from these three factors. Cause us to be stronger in our relationship and our faith. And when we're going through it, if we're going through the 
mill and they're going through the mundane stuff of life, Lord, and the trials and the tests and the sickness. Lord, we pray this morning, Father, I pray, Lord, that we would be a people who would focus upon these excellencies and know that there is a greater source that we can tap into. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he has a Holy Spirit that he's given us freely. That we are not the head. We are the head and we are not the tail. Hallelujah. That we have the keys to the kingdom. That's what we're, that's what we're being given. The keys to the kingdom. That we have a relationship with the Spirit. We have the gifts of the Spirit. We have supernatural power. Hallelujah. Because God has given it to us. Hallelujah. We worship you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What I want us to do, sorry, what I want us to do this morning, we're going to open up the front and we're going to pray for healing this morning. So if you have an illness of any kind, please do come forward. We're going to enter into a time of worship now. You don't need to feel nervous or afraid. Do come up. The presence of God is here. And we're going to pray and we're going to stand with you and pray for healing. Because you know what it says in the Bible? If someone's sick, anoint his head with heal with oil, gather the elders around and pray for the sick, hallelujah because the prayer of a righteous man avails much, so let's do that if you want a prayer for healing this morning please do come forward Amen Great is thy faithfulness O God my Father to Jesus Christ this morning. If you need healing, we've got the oil out. Come forward, receive healing this morning. You know what? The fact that God has true being and that we are becoming really does tell us that he is the source of our healing. Amen. Amen. This is who God is. He's the source of life and he loves us. Hallelujah. So let's lay hands on the sick. If you do have a sickness this morning, please do come forward. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you want to know more of his power, more of his love, whatever it is, bring your need to Jesus Christ and we'd love to pray for you. Pardon for sin and a peace that endures. Thine own deep presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings, O oh mine, and ten thousand. 
Oh God, only the good stuff there from the Lord, amen. Mm -hmm. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, we're about to do something that the word tells us that every time we do it, we are proclaiming the death of God, uh, the death of Jesus till he comes. Um, it is one death that continues to or has given birth to a lot of life in our lives uh, since the time it happened. Um, so I would like to invite Brother Constantine. Please keep hold of uh, the communion emblems so that we can take it together. So, at the Last Supper, as Jesus was with his disciples, he gave thanks and brought bread and told them that that was his body, which was broken for our sins. And he told them to do that and remember that. Just partake of the bread. Then he took the cup and told him that this was his blood, that was the new covenant. And he also told them to remember that, to never forget it. Let's drink. We're going to take two minutes or less than that to pray and to reflect on the structures that Jesus gave his disciples and which has become a culture uh, throughout the years let's pray father Lord um, is our norm we come before you again today and uh, to tell you that we remember we remember what you did for us we remember the cost and we remember the free ticket into new life that you blessed us with and we thank you again we can never thank you enough 
thank you for your death, which is life, which was life, and will continue to be life to all humankind. Thank you, Father. We praise your name. Be glorified. In Jesus' name we give thanks and pray. Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful thing it is to remember what you did, Lord. That that cross is the sign that your will towards us will not change. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. You will finish the work you've done, Lord. You will make a way where there is no way. Hallelujah. You're fighting for us, Lord. God before us who can be against us, amen. Unchanging God. Turning light and 
hands around We worship you We worship you You are here mending Mending every heart We worship you We worship you You are here You are here turning lives around Turning lives around Hallelujah we worship you god we worship you. you're here mending you are here mending every heart mending every heart i worship you i worship you they call you we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yeah. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you So even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. So even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Cause even when we don't see it, he's working. And even when you don't feel it, he's working. He never stops, he never stops working. He never stops, he never stops working. So even when you don't see it, he's working. And even when you don't feel it, he's working. He never stops, he never stops working. He never stops, he never stops working. So even when you don't see it, he's working. And even when you don't feel it, he's working. He never stops, he never stops working. He never stops, he never stops working. So even when you don't see it, he's working. And even when you don't feel it, he's working. He never stops, he never stops working. He never stops, he never stops working. doesn't slumber or sleep he's watching over you he'll never stop working that is who you are God. that is who you are that is who you are Jesus Healer. 
praise God. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, your power. Thank you for your ministry, Holy Spirit. Thank you. You are the one who builds the church, who plants churches, who leads churches. I'm just a steward. What a privilege it is to just steward and witness what you're doing here in Oxford and in the lives of individuals, men and women, Lord, we praise you. And children as well. What you're doing now, children, we speak that in faith. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just a quick notice for, um, I think, uh, I don't know if you've got notices this week. We started the restoration groups this week. Um, we had restoration women that took place at our house. And we also had uh, restoration men. We had two restoration men groups. One started in Princess Risborough, one started in Oxford. Um, I really, really would encourage you to engage with that and to be a part of that because, you see, discipleship is really important, isn't it? You know, we come to church. This is a worship gathering, yeah? There's a bit of discipleship that happens here through the teaching and the preaching and worshiping and praying together. But this is essentially a worship gathering, yeah? We need to be disciples. We need to do life together. And that is really, really important to us here at this church. We really value discipleship. We want you to be all that you can in Jesus Christ. We want you to receive everything he's got for you. Amen. We want you to live a victorious life in Christ. We want you to, we want you just to be, just, we want God's best for you. And so that's why we value discipleship in this church. And so if you've not um, engaged with those groups yet, really encourage you to do that. Um, I know there's a couple of new people here as well. Uh, well, they're not new, but they, they've been away over the Christmas and stuff. Come and have a word with me if you want to be part of that group. We're meeting up in a really casual way this week. We met in, on Tuesday night um, in Oxford uh, at Costa near Bond Square. We met up for an hour. That was it. Just an hour of your time to talk about the sermon on Sunday. And really, just uh, the vision for it is is to father and raise up fathers to rebuild society. You know, we're lacking fathers in this world. You know, that's why you've got abortion. That's why you've got transgenderism. Homosexuality is a father wound. It's just endless. There's all sorts going off in our world. We need fathers. And so the, the, the vision for Restoration Men is that we would father one another so that we can father society. Amen. We can father women and children, you know. So do come along to that. It's just an hour of your time. This week, we just got to know each other a bit. Uh, but it's really stripped back. It's not program heavy. So do engage with that. And, you know, do you want to say a bit about the women's group? or? Good. So I'd really encourage you. We only meet once a month at the moment, but that might go up. But we had a great time, didn't we? Chatting away, speaking about the things of God, encouraging one another. And I just came away feeling really built up in my faith. And yeah, just I just loved it. So yeah, if you want to come, you're always welcome out in our home. Oh yes, and Delroy had a testimony, I think. Have you? Forgot? <laughs> Right, okay, yeah, yeah. I know I nearly forgot then, so thank you, Chloe. But yeah, no, I remember that uh, that text. Um, so yeah, no, excellent, brother. Really happy to have you come and share with us. Bless you. Amen. Yeah, Good afternoon, church. Um, ooh, the Spirit of God is so real. Amen. Yeah, because um, I think what, I've, what I'm about to talk about has been covered today. And um, just to confirm, and I had made some notes on my phone, so it's not that I've made it up or I feel led. You know, um, two things really um, is God's timing is always good. Um, I was out on Friday evening, you know, doing some shopping. And, you know, I was walking, and just as I was walking, um, the guy, a guy came out of a kebab shop with a burger and said, here you go, you know, I'm having this as a sample you know, and it's just, the, the, it's the timing that brought something as significant to me is that God is always on time. You know, when you need him, he's there at the right time, at the right moment. Because I was there just in that time to receive that burger. You know, but things, when things happen in your life, there's a greater spiritual significance about it that we have to be mindful of, that we don't miss it, that God is always on time. And the second one is that song that was sung, you know, about um, God, even when you don't feel it, is working. Because um, what, how that relates to me is that in the wintertime, when you look at the trees, they seem dead, right? As if nothing has happened. So for somebody who does not understand the time 
or the season, it may seem as if dead and nothing is happening. But the roots are still there. There's still life in it. And so for some of us, when we are going through situations, it seems dead. It seems dry. And sometimes we are tempted to ask ourselves, God, what is going on? But that song just brings it back home. Even when we don't feel that like he's working, he's always working. So I encourage you, just trust God. The timing may not be what you want, but God is always on time. And the scripture that we're standing with this year is Proverbs 3, verse 5, which says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. And how, it, how that relates for me and how I see it is that we live in an uncertain world, just as um, Steve preached, but we serve a certain God. The politicians don't know, scientists don't know, but God knows and he understands everything. Because even I've, I've even got a colleague who's had um, four jabs of the COVID vaccine and still got, the, still got it. You know, so the scientists do try, you know, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not anti-COVID, don't get me wrong, but people try, scientists do try, but they are under the will of God. It is only as God permits as God leads. So I say to you, we live in an uncertain world, but we serve an uncertain God who knows and he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So just trust him and he will come through for you on time. Praise God. I don't know, I know we uh, invited you, your wife, Karen, to come and preach. We should get you up as well, they're fantastic. Yeah, awesome stuff. We could do like a double team or something, I don't know. But um, yeah, no, praise God. Awesome, awesome. So that is an amazing testimony. So thank you for sharing that. And if you do have your stories of how God showed up and showed off in your life, do drop them through on a text or an email or on a WhatsApp and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get you up to come and share because we love to hear what God's doing right here, right now in 2022. Amen, Chloe? Yeah, in 2022. Okay, I'm going to invite uh, Janet to come up and pray. Close us in prayer if you would like, Janet. Yeah, so come on, come on up, sister. Come and pray for us. And then we'll go for cake and coffee, amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time that we've had today. We thank you, Lord, for all the, the unseen and the unseen things that you've done that we don't even know about. Because like the song said, you're always working. We thank you, Lord, for everything going forward in this week. We pray, Father God, that you would help us as a church, help Restoration Church to be more like Christ. Help us, Lord, direct our paths this week. Deliver us from every evil work and preserve us for your heavenly kingdom this week, O oh God. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And may we all be obedient to your ever, your never-changing word this week. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, we also forgot to take the offering. So if you want to give uh, the offering baskets at the back... Um, and do give if, if you want to do that. If, you, if you're a guest here, don't feel obliged to give, obviously. But if you're part of this church community, tithing is something we do. We give to God. We give the first fruits of our wages and what we have. Um, and this is really just a biblical principle, isn't it? It's a command of scripture um, to give to God, you know, for the kingdom, for his work. Um, and when we give to God the first fruits, we're promised that he'll, he'll, he'll make sure that we're never lacking anything. It's, a, it's, a, it's an act of faith to give to God. So, uh, like I say, if you're a guest here, don't feel obliged to give. But if, if you are part of this community, let's give to God. And I'll just I'll pray for that now. Lord, we thank you, Lord, uh, for our wages. We thank you, Father, for the food that we have to eat. We thank you for the breath in our lungs. We thank you for electricity and heating, Lord, and just everything that you've provided for us, Lord. Um, and today, God, we offer you, Lord, our tithe and our offering, Lord, in thankfulness, God, and in faith. And we pray, Lord, may your kingdom... Uh, be furthered and established through our offering, Lord. Uh, we give this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cool, we're going to go through for cake and coffee. Do come through. We'd like to, uh, you know, carry on being the church. Amen. <laughs>